Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 16th of June. India hosts two day special ASEAN foreign ministers meet in New Delhi to boost ties amid US China rivalry. Pakistan hikes fuel prices to win IMF funding. PM Shahbaz says had no choice. And Battered by economic crisis, Sri Lankans rush for passports to better lives. And now for all the details. The foreign ministers of India and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, held talks on a range of issues including the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war and sharpening rivalry between the US and China on the first day of the two-day meeting in New Delhi on Thursday. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar said the country fully supports a strong, unified and prosperous ASEAN, one whose centrality in Indo-Pacific is fully recognized. A two-day special ASEAN-India Foreign Minister's meeting aimed to review relations between the two sides and to forge a response to the impact of the Ukraine crisis on the economy and security of the region began in New Delhi on Thursday. India is hosting the meeting to mark the 30th anniversary of New Delhi's dialogue relations and the 10th anniversary of strategic partnership with ASEAN. In his opening address at the conclave, India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar said that India fully supports a strong, unified and prosperous ASEAN. ASEAN's role today is perhaps more important than ever before, given the geopolitical challenges and uncertainties that the world faces. India fully supports a strong, unified and prosperous ASEAN, one whose centrality in the Indo-Pacific is fully recognized. India-ASEAN ties must respond to the world that we confront, Jashankar said, noting that ASEAN has always stood tall as a beacon of regionalism, multilateralism and globalization. Vivian Balakrishnan, Singapore Foreign Minister, who is co-chairing the meeting, warned of a growing U.S.-China rivalry that could threaten regional stability. ASEAN comprises Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Brunei, the Philippines, Singapore, Cambodia, Malaysia and Myanmar and is central to India's active policy and its vision for the wider Indo-Pacific. Earlier, the foreign ministers of the ASEAN nations called on Prime Minister Narendra Modi and discussed the ongoing cooperation between the two sides. Protest against Indian government's new military recruitment scheme Agnipa turned violent on Thursday as angry aspirants set ablaze trains and blocked roads. The protesters expressed they are unhappy, particularly with the four-year tenure system and the 17.5 to 21-year age restriction that now makes most of them ineligible. Angry protesters set ablaze at least three trains in India's eastern Bihar state on Thursday as protests erupted across the country against the government's new military recruitment scheme, Agni Path. Several aspirants for the armed forces are unhappy with the changes introduced under the recruitment scheme for the armed forces, particularly the four-year tenure system, no pension provisions for those released early, and the 17.5 to 21-year age restriction that now makes many of them ineligible. Agitation spilled in Bihar's Jehanabad district and other parts as youths protested by setting fires on tires, lying down on the railway track and urged the government to roll back the system, while raising concerns about lack of job opportunities after the four-year stint. Young armed forces aspirants also block traffic at several places in Haryana and Madhya Pradesh states against the new policy, under which only 46,000 soldiers will be recruited this year. 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, while unveiling the scheme on Tuesday, had said a more youthful profile will help train troops more easily in newer technologies and their health and fitness levels will be much better. The new policy assures a quarter of recruits will be kept on after the end of their term. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday said he was left with no choice but to raise the fuel prices as he blamed the hike on the previous government's deal with the International Monetary Fund, which he termed as the worst ever. The IMF has said the South Asian nation needs to take strict measures to control its fiscal deficit and resume a $6 billion US dollar bailout package. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday blamed the latest hike in fuel prices on the previous PTI-led government's worst-ever deal with IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and said he was left with no choice. Taking to Twitter, the PM said that he would soon share specifics of the deal between the IMF and the PTI in the coming days. The Finance Ministry on Wednesday announced the removal of fuel subsidies in a bid to trim the fiscal deficit and aimed at securing critical support from the IMF. This is the third cut in fuel subsidies since May 26. The hike by nearly 24 rupees has taken the current petrol prices to Rs 233.89 per litre, unprecedented in the country's history. Earlier this week, Finance Minister Mifta Ismail had said abolishing the fuel subsidies till July was imperative to prevent the country from going bankrupt. He blamed ousted Premier Imran Khan had given the subsidy in his last days in power to cool down public sentiment in the face of double-digit inflation, a move the IMF said deviated from the terms of a 2019 deal. The IMF wants the South Asian nation to take strict measures to control its fiscal deficit in the face of a balance of payment crisis and resume a $6 billion US dollar bailout package. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves have tumbled to $9.2 billion, while the Pakistani rupee has plummeted to historic lows of 206 rupees against the US dollar. More news from Pakistan. Tea drinkers have expressed mixed opinion after a Pakistani minister urged them to cut down on their tea consumption to help reduce the import bill and avert an economic crisis. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves have depleted to 9.2 billion US dollars, only enough for less than 45 days of imports. Pakistani tea drinkers expressed divided opinion on Wednesday, a day after Minister for Planning and Development Ehsan Iqbal urged them to cut down on their tea consumption to help reduce the import bill and to save the country's depleting foreign exchange reserves. Ehsan Iqbal said Pakistanis should reduce their tea consumption by one or two cups per day because the country borrows money for tea import as well. The whole nation should engage in this mission to leave all those items wherein the valued foreign exchange is spent, he said. Some residents in financial capital Karachi said they will try to cut down consumption, while others said this won't make much difference until all people understood about the crisis the country has been facing. अक्सर ऐसे लोगों को हम जानते हैं जो दिन में पांच पांच छह छह कप भी पी लेते हैं आउटफील्ड में होते हैं तब उसके वजह से हर जगह होटल में बैठ के तो अगर एक कात कप हम कम कर दें और सब मिल के ये तो इसमें हो सकता है हमारी मशहद का कुछ बेहतरी हो जाए इंपोर्ट में हमें आसानी हो जाए। The South Asian nation of 220 million is the world's largest importer of tea, buying more than 590 million US dollars worth in 2020, according to Statista.com an online portal providing data on consumer markets. Pakistan has been facing severe economic challenges for months, leading to an increase in the prices of food, gas and oil. The country has banned the import of all non-essential luxury goods in a bid to stabilize the economy. In news from Afghanistan, United Nations Human Rights Council UNHRC Chief Michelle Bachelet has said that people of Afghanistan are experiencing some of the darkest moments in a generation as the water nation has plunged into a deep economic, social and humanitarian crisis in nearly one year since the Taliban seized power. 
Addressing the ongoing UNHRC session on Wednesday, Bachelet said that despite repeated commitments by Taliban authorities to respect human rights, the civic space has shrunk rapidly and dramatically. She said there has been an institutionalized and systematic operation of women. Bachelet cited a school ban has been affecting 1.1 million secondary school girls, as well as other decrees, including the enforcement of the hijab rule and restrictions on women's access to jobs. She maintained the need for concerted work by the de facto authorities to renew space for civil society and urged the international community for support to safeguard the human rights in Afghanistan. Moving on. Sri Lankans are queuing outside Immigration and Emigration Department headquarters for days, hoping to get a passport and with it, a chance to leave the country wilting under an economic crisis. The urgency for many people aiming to leave was compounded recently by a warning by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe that a food crisis is only months away. Stacks of new passports lie on a table at Sri Lanka's Department of Immigration and Emigration as officials making final checks hurriedly looked over them. Hundreds of people have amassed before collection counters nearby, hoping it will be their turn to collect a new passport soon, along with the ability to leave the South Asian nation as it weathers the worst financial crisis in seven decades. A senior official said he has not seen demand for passports on this scale in the six years he has been at the department, adding that the 160 members of staff were exhausted trying to meet the demand for new passports. I am going to Backlog ke akti bunat ape nila dharing sena surada dina wale di raja kari karamin tamai e tate kalamana karne karaga nimin tibi. The department has tightened security, expanded working hours, and tripled the number of passports it issues. But at least 3,000 people are dropping off their forms every day. 50 year old housewife Indrani Priyantha, who has been in the line for three days, was hoping to hand in papers and obtain her first passport so she could apply for a job as a housemaid in Kuwait. The urgency for many people aiming to leave was compounded recently by a warning from new Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe that a food crisis is only months away. The United Nations says Sri Lanka risks a full-blown humanitarian emergency and it has launched a plan to provide 47.2 million US dollars to 1.7 million of the country's most vulnerable people. In a bid to fix the crisis, Sri Lanka is in talks with the International Monetary Fund IMF for a bailout package having suspended repayment on about 12 billion US dollars in foreign debt in April. Moving on to news from Nepal. In the wake of a rise in aviation accidents in Nepal, authorities on Wednesday organized an emergency mock drill at the international airport in Kathmandu, enacting a scene of a plane crash and immediate rescue response. A 2013 ban by European Union on all Nepal-based airlines from flying in its airspace has still continued, citing safety concerns. An emergency mock drill on a plane crash rescue operation was conducted by the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal at the Tribun International Airport in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday. The mock drill came in the wake of a rise in aviation accidents in the Himalayan nation, which has been blacklisted by the European Union due to low standard safety rules on flight. As part of the drill, an emergency rescue team enacted a scene of a plane crash enveloped in a place. Nepal Army, the police and health officials and other people present at the airport immediately began depicting rescue operations with use of ambulances as well as a helicopter. According to the rule of the International Civil Aviation Organization, every international recognized airport should conduct full-scale emergency exercise every two years. 
Earlier in May, more than 20 people, including four Indians, were killed in a plane crash in Nepal's mountainous Mustang district due to change in weather conditions. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this safety. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.